Hi, everyone. We're back. We just had a little bit of technical difficulty. Uh, we are super happy to introduce our third panel presentation for the day. Um, Professor Sardar Islam is very, very accomplished. And in fact, his long history of incredible work and research and work in the humanitarian space as academic publications, uh, I can't do justice to that in this short introduction. Um, but he right now is the Director of Decision Sciences and Modeling Program at Victoria University in Australia. He's the Distinguished Visiting Professor of Artificial Intelligence. He's published 29 authored scholarly academic books by reputed publishers and over 250 articles. And I don't know if the non-academics on, <laughs> on this presentation can really fathom that, but that is some serious academic accolades. So we are really, really honored to have you here. His academic work has gained international acclaim in different areas, resulting in many honors and awards, many distinguished visiting or adjunct professorship appoint appointments in different countries, appointments in editorial boards of journals, and keynote speeches at many conferences, including this one. So we are really, really honored to have you here, Professor Sardar. Um, his current areas of interest and expertise include artificial intelligence, analytics, machine learning, data science, blockchain, cybersecurity, and their mathematics and applications in business, health, engineering, law, and sports. Um, and for those of you on this call who aren't that great at mathematics and the hard data like myself, um, I really appreciate that people like Professor Sadar can contribute to these really important discussions. So with that, I'll just hand over to you for your presentation. Thank you, Professor Mariana. Greetings, uh, the participants. As you know, my topic is digital humanitarian leadership. Uh, you know, we know that uh, the world is changing. Uh, like uh, now we have uh, artificial intelligence, digitalization, uh, and uh, we are um, living in a science fiction world. You know, digitalization, artificial intelligence are changing all areas in the world. And there are a lot of uncertainties, a lot of concerns. Those you, you follow the development of artificial intelligence, uh, you understand those concerns and issues. And these developments are also affecting the humanitarian organizations and their activities. So that's why, and now the humanitarian leadership, as you know, the topic is digital humanitarian leadership. That means that our traditional model of humanitarian leadership is changing. And the paradigm of digital humanitarian leadership is emerging. That means uh, humanitarian leaders need to understand these changes in artificial intelligence and emerging technologies, and then operate, adopt, or perform their role accordingly. So that's why the title of my talk is Digit Digital Humanitarian Leadership. So, uh, it's, it's, it's a new role of, uh, uh, new type of role for humanitarian leaders. Uh, uh, I, I, I have a lot of uh, PowerPoints. It's a big uh, article, but I will not actually go through all of them. I'll focus only the main points. Uh, so you can see these are the, this is the structure of uh, my full presentation. But as I have said, I'll just focus on the, the, the main point. Uh, uh, the, as I said, uh, first I will just briefly say the you know, digitalization and the use of ICT, information and communication technologies and artificial intelligence. Uh, and the, why do we adopt? There are some benefits. And then uh, the emergence of digital humanitarian leadership and uh, what are the necessary knowledge and skills uh, of ICT that the human leaders need to know? Uh, and then uh, the human leaders uh, and the organization adoption of ICT and artificial intelligence. Uh, and the next point that I also briefly mentioned 
is that uh, this uh, humanitarian activities and humanitarian roles are basically uh, in the area of game theory because uh, different peoples, uh, different agents and organizations are involved. So if we want to understand um, properly the uh, digital humanitarian leadership, we have to also understand the concept uh, of game theory because uh, humanitarian work and uh, the artificial intelligence and game theory, they are all interrelated to perform a good role of a humanitarian leader, the humanitarian leaders need to understand uh, all these related concepts. So that is the main argument of this presentation. So as I said, there are some of the uh, quite technical, very highly mathematical PowerPoints and presentation, but I will not go discuss all of them, but basic um, uh, message of my presentation uh, is that uh, the traditional role of uh, humanitarian leaders is changing. Uh, and now we have the paradigm of uh, digital um, humanitarian leadership. And to perform the role of humanitarian, digital human, humanitarian leadership role, the humanitarian leaders uh, need to understand, adopt, and apply uh, artificial intelligence and other technologies. But uh, then at the same time, uh, these applications and our adoption of uh, artificial intelligence also should be based on a game theoretic perspective or a framework or uh, a more technically in a sort of mathematical modeling framework. So these are the, um, uh, sort of uh, issues I will go to talk and as I, I'll go very fast because uh, as I have, I have introduced the major issues. Um, uh, as you probably know, uh, those who follow the developments in artificial intelligence, uh, you probably know that uh, we don't know actually what is the future of mankind. Uh, whether there are issues, whether they, one day robots will overtake human beings whether the human beings will have to finally migrate to the Mars um, and what will happen. So there are a lot of uh, real uh, scientific based uh, concerns and issues. So uh, things are changing, changing very fast and uh, changing at a very, very uh, substantially around the whole world. So there is a concern issue that what is our future? Uh, future of the world and future of human beings. So this is an issue that I think uh, all the uh, humanitarian leaders should also be familiar with what is happening to the human being. And some of the human, uh, as I said, my conclusion at the end is also that, uh, you know, uh, there should be some humanitarian organizations and leaders, they should uh, address or focus on their sort of issues, you know what we do for survival in this all, in the fact that artificial intelligence is emerging and digitalization taking place. Uh, and then uh, how to uh, manage, uh, run, operate uh, humanitarian activities organization and to do the humanitarian leader job. Uh, so why the digitalization, artificial intelligence, are being adopted because there are many benefits of those uh, technologies, uh, increased as efficiency, productivity, convenience, and so on. So we cannot uh, stop adopting those um, technologies. Um, so because of this uh, extensive uses of these emerging technologies, now we have this digital humanitarian leadership paradigm. So, so the humanitarian leaders now have to uh, adopt this new framework or this new paradigm and they have to identify themselves as digital humanitarian leaders. And uh, these are the, some of the uh, basic uh, things that the humanitarian leaders need to understand are given here. But as I said, I will go very fast. 
they need to know a lot of computer and uh, technology and uh, cloud uh, uh, cyber security all that sort of things to do their everyday work to run their organization but also to manage uh, humanitarian projects uh, so uh, the, there are three areas of uh, humanitarian uh, operations that uh, these technologies are affecting and uh, the humanitarian leaders need to understand those areas first in the, their personal work the roles they do, how to do, how to use computer or, or how to use internet or how to use Zoom to do their office work or uh, that sort of basic things, but also uh, digitalization or digi digital transformation transformation of their organizations because uh, traditionally, uh, as, as we know that uh, uh, aid organizations or other humanitarian organization they normally operate offline more uh, um, you know just uh, not that much uh, uh, online operations not virtual operations but that has to be changed because uh, digital transformation helps these uh, uh, the humanitarian organizations aid organizations to be more effective uh, uh, more efficient and so on but also in doing humanitarian operations, activities, and projects, uh, there are also enormous benefits and a scope for application of this emerging uh, information and communication technologies, especially artificial intelligence technologies. So these are the three areas that uh, uh, these uh, emerging technologies uh, can be applied or the leaders of the organization should be aware of the development and application in these three areas. Um, so as I said, there are many ways uh, artificial intelligence can help uh, um, aid and other humanitarian activities. For example, robots and drones supplying food, medicine during flood, disaster, COVID, and mobile phones, computers can be used for education project management, implementation, communication, web-based materials for health, happiness, family support uh, in different projects. So there are extensive applications of uh, this emerging technology. And uh, the other thing that, I, as I have said, the humanitarian work actually takes place in a multi-agent system. Multi-agent means uh, different people are involved. Therefore, this humanitarian work is essentially in the, in the area of game theory. So the, this, because as you know, game theory is probably the most important paradigm in the current world. And many people got, almost every year, people getting Nobel Prize for their work in the area of game theory. Application of game theory to humanitarian uh, activities, leadership styles or operations and project management uh, will will benefit humanitarian organizations and leaders enormously. So, uh, and uh, there are some technical work, but also a conceptual and operation level. The game theory and the you know these uh, technologies can be combined. For example, you are using uh, if we, if we are using uh, say uh, robot, whether different robots will coordinate among themselves or not. That is an issue. And how do we ensure that the different uh, robots will coordinate to perform their task? So this, in that situation, we can do programming uh, where based on game theory. So uh, the, the humanitarian leaders, organizations, uh, and the community as a whole also need to adopt the paradigm of game theory and, and artificial intelligence in an integrated framework to improve the quality and effectiveness and performance of humanitarian activities. So as I said, I have other uh, uh, sort of uh, PowerPoints. I'm just going through just to show you. Uh, uh, this is an important area for collaboration also for academics. And this is an extremely important area for uh, uh, humanitarian operations also. 
And uh, uh, this is my email address. Uh, if you Google me, you can find me. If you have any questions, comments, uh, we can follow up. Thank you very much.